What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I haven't done a video in a while, but well, uh, we have a new expansion coming out. We have uh, Novigrad, uh, the upcoming expansion. So Novigrad will be coming out June 28th. I, That's insane. I, I can't believe that CDPR is getting it out that quickly. Uh, that, that's 11 days from now or 10 days depending or however many days depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, but the new Gwent expansion is coming out very, very soon. Uh, in less than two weeks time, we are getting over 90 new cards. Uh, we're getting a bunch of dual cards. So dual cards is a, a new thing in Gwent. Uh, essentially, of those 90 plus new cards for uh, the new faction, three of them will be able to be used in other factions this goes for uh, all five factions so be so there'll be a total of 15 dual cards uh that you will be able to use uh throughout the different factions um yeah so i went over all the cards on stream today they did a dev stream today they released or revealed 20 cards today so i'm going to be doing that uh there's a few questions thrown in there too which i decided you know what, i'll just leave those in um they're also going to be revealing six cards a day uh, via different content creators. Um, so I would like to do a video a day on those six cards. I don't know if that'll end up happening. Maybe I'll do 12, uh, every other day. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you guys are excited as I am for the new expansion and I'll see you guys on the next video. Okay. So let me start off with crowns. Let's find a card that has crown on it. Okay. So, turn down music. Yeah, sure. So, with the new faction syndicate, uh, there's a new mechanic. It's called, like, crowns or something. Uh, essentially, there are cards that allow you to obtain or ways to obtain crowns. Um, so, profit is one of the examples. You can have up to nine coins in a round. Um... So that's the amount of coins that you can get. Uh, it's like a little visual indicator next to your leader. You can go up to nine. Um, you cannot go over nine. If you go over nine, nothing happens. It's just nine crowns, whatever. Uh, so if you're at eight crowns and you use profit three, you go to nine crowns. The other two disappear, right? You just don't get anything. Um, crowns do carry over. Uh, not by much, though. It's half, right? So if you have nine crowns in round one and you spend zero of them, uh, and the round ends, you go into round two, you now have four crowns, right? Uh, it rounds down, not up. Music off. Okay, I mean, I like music. Now, now I'm just, like, talking. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, crowns carry over, but they carry over by half rounding down. So if you have five crowns, you'll have two crowns the next round. Um, yeah. So there is a little bit of carryover, but they're not points on the board, right? So you have to use cards to use these crowns. Now... Uh, when it comes to crowns, crowns are worth about one provision a piece, right? So if we look at this card as profit three, so you gain three coins immediately, uh, and then you get to damage a unit or an enemy unit by three. So if you value at, or if you value a crown at one point, this is a six for five. Um, what we've noticed in, um, somewhere, uh, Spending crowns can be a little bit difficult, right? So sometimes you have too many crowns and you don't have ways to spend it. And that's where cards that have like fees uh, and the this guy, the fire sworn dude, uh, this is where like being able to blow a lot of coins at once is very important. So uh, I guess I'll go over this card next. Let me zoom out, full card. So this card is uh, another card. This is four strength, 10 provisions, uh, profit four. So when you play this card, you immediately get uh, four coins. Fee two. So fee two is similar to order, except it's order in the sense that you have to click on the card to get the ability, but it has zeal in the sense that you get to use it immediately when you play it. So it's a combination of order and zeal, but it's unlimited zeal. So what I mean by this is you can play this, right? Profit four. Let's say you have four coins already uh, attached to your leader. So now you have eight. If you Pay fee two, you go down to six, you spawn a uh, fire sworn Zella, then you can click it again, spawn another, click it again, spawn another, click it again, spawn another. So you can keep spawning, you can keep using the fee as long as you have the money, right? So if you have nine, you can use this four times in a row. Um, yeah. 
So it's basically a way to spend your coins. So translate your coins into uh, points. Uh, so leaders help generate coins. Maybe. Uh, we haven't seen any leaders. So yeah, it's a crazy finisher. Um, so if we base it on points alone, this is... Well, we don't know how big a fire sworn zealot is. But my guess is it's not a three. Three would be insane. Three would break the card. Is Fee turn locked? No. What do you wait? What do you mean by turn locked? You can turn locked? I don't know what that means. If it's one, it's. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out what the number is based on balancing. If it's yeah, okay. It's probably a two. If it's a three, it's broken. If it's a one, it's complete garbage. So it's pro. There's no cooldown. You get to use it as many times as you have points to. Brian Wong gifted a tier one sub to Gunvald. Brian Thank you Wong so much. A tier one sub to Scumbag Gunvald. No, it's uh, sub the turn lock is one per. No, you can use it as many times oh, as you want. So if you only have four coins, you can only use it twice. Well, I guess profit for it, you would go up to eight. Inferns. Thank you so much for the, the fifteen. Monotone voice, resident sleeper. Of listening to the same... Yeah, okay. Thanks, man. Monotone oh, voice. <sighs> <laughs> Chuckle Crusader, thank you so much for the two months. All right, all right, all right. Let's keep going through the cards. We'll, we'll start at the beginning. So, uh, I, I... Okay, this is another mechanic. Uh, we'll just come to it when we come to it. Uh, so, first card. This card is four provisions, uh, four strength. Give an allied unit poison and boost it by two. So, if you poison one of your own units, it's a six for four. Is that good? Yeah. Someone was saying, well, if people start playing poison, they can poison your card, and then it's really bad. Uh, it's not actually that bad, right? Like, let's say you poison, like, a one or a two. If, you're po if your opponent's plays a playing a poison card and killing off a two, you don't care. That's really good, right? Because if your opponent's playing poison, typically you're looking for, like, six-plus strength to be poison killing. If they're poisoning, like, a two or a four, like, it doesn't really matter. Like... Even in that worst case scenario that people play poison and you, you poison is shit. Like we we play poison. Poison is terrible. Uh, so no one's going to be playing poison outside of maybe like a poison deck like this. But this type of poison, you're poisoning your own cards. So it, it's a if you queue into some random person playing poison, it's a four for four. That's it's like a five percent chance of it like losing value. So it's 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 a really good card. Um, yeah. Uh, another card it synergizes with, I'm going to skip through to this card. This is another 4 for 4 every ally turn on turn end if this unit is poison boosted by 1. Um, so this is the type of thing where it's like, okay, you want to play this first and then you poison it uh, and then you start getting extra value. Now this, if your opponent is playing poison, well now it's kind of awkward because this is going to get quite large. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, if people are trap. playing poison, <laughs> you don't want to run this combo. If people aren't running poison, then it's quite good. Oh, Irene Cot and Essothon. Thank you guys for the three and two months. Welcome back. It's a four engine. A yes, it is a four engine. New faction. What if MG uh, you can pre-order both packs. At I assume the goal is to end the round with zero crowns. So... You don't have to end the round with zero crowns. Uh, if you end round one or round two with more than zero crowns, that's fine because it carries over half, right? So if you have five crowns, it carries over uh, two, so it rounds down. Um, but in round three, you typically don't want to end with crowns because if you're ending the round with crowns, it means you're losing points, right? Because you're not utilizing them to the full potential. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, this card... Uh, I don't know what it's called. Whenever you spawn one or more units, boost off by one. So this is obviously a card that works very well with the... Uh, I think it's Firesworn something. It works well with a card like this, which allows you to spawn multiple units really quickly. It also works very well with... Does it work with Jermaine? Jermaine spawns cows. Whenever you spawn one or more units, boost off by one. So my question is, is does Jermaine give this plus four or plus one? Huh. If it's plus four, that's crazy. I don't know. It's probably just plus one. I don't think, because it does it all at once. It doesn't spawn one at a time. So it's probably just plus one. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, I mean, if you're playing a Swarm deck with, like, Yen and, like, Zoltan, 
you're still probably playing Tremaine. Anyway, uh, how good is this card? It depends on how good the Swarm Faction is. If the Swarm Faction is really good, then or Archetype, then you play this card. If it's not, then you don't play this card. Um, it is kind of on the low end for an engine. It is a 3 for 4. You would like to see 4 for 4, but yeah, we'll see. Um, this is a don't know the name of the card. Got you, boss, in chat. 4 for 4 uh, has Intimidate. I believe Intimidate is... Yes. Uh, Intimidate is every time you play a crime card, it boosts us by one. So it's similar to Thrive. It's similar to uh, Scoia'tael Ambassador. What's the name of the card? Shit. What's the Scoia'tael thingy? Uh, I don't remember. Harmony. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew that. Uh, so it's similar to Harmony, right? All of these are plus one uh, strength whenever you do something so in this case it's every time you play uh a crime card crime is a new type of special for uh the syndicate they showed a couple crime cards so an example of a crime card would be this card down here right so if you play this card uh your cards with intimidate get plus one uh is this card good eh, it's a four for four i mean if you're playing multiple crime cards yeah it's similar to like a uh uh, what's it called? Jeez, I cannot remember names. Uh, Fledgling. So if you play a Fledgling and you get, like, one proc, it's a good card. If it gets more than one proc, it's great. Um, yeah, same with this. So the only reason you wouldn't run this is if your bronze set or stack of cards is already, uh, too big and you don't have room for it. Otherwise, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, this card, this is Gabor on steroids. <laughs> Uh, Intimidate, so similar to the last card, every time you play a crime card, it gets plus one, similar to Gabor with Dwarf. Uh, Profit three, so when you play this card, you immediately get three coins added to your stack of coins. Um, and fee five, melee gain resilience. So fee five, fee is similar to, well, yeah, fee you, I, I mentioned earlier, similar to like zeal and order, but basically you click on the card, uh, it spends five coins. If you have five coins, if you don't have five coins, you can't click on it. Um, you spend five and you gain resilience. Um, and once again, fee, you can do multiple times. So in theory, if you really wanted to, you could gain resilience and then gain resilience again, uh, at, like a next turn after you gain more coins. But what you could do is you could use this in round one, uh, use the fee. And then the next round, you could use the fee again and go into round three. So you can have this in round one two and three yeah that's pretty good um mm -hmm. three rounds of a five point engine is not bad that's not bad uh <laughs> yeah it's pretty good granted more uh muzzle is a good card actually okay if this if the new faction sees any play which i'm assuming it's going to um, muzzle becomes insane, right? Because not only is Gabor an amazing muzzle target, this is a really good muzzle target. So now you have two... Ah, shit. Muzzle is going to be auto-included in every deck. Ugh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you don't play this card because muzzle is going to be auto-included. Uh, this card's going to be... Yeah. Um, this card might not actually see play if it sees too much play because then muzzle is actually auto include and just destroys it or people start running um purify cards like peller because you can you can just knock the resilience off if you make this immune can you use the fee again yeah why not you can click on cards right if you make yen con immune you can still click on it so yeah if you <laughs> if you immune this in round one Assuming you get five coins in round two, you can immune it into round three. I would assume so. I would assume fee works similar to order and that you can click on it even if it's immune. So yes, you can make immune carry over for round one, two, three. Yeah, uh, I think this card's going to be very good. I mean, we, we Gabor is insane. This card's also insane. Uh, remember, Gabor works very well in Squatel because it's uh, is a faction that has lots of carryover. Uh, Syndicate, or yeah. Also has carryover. It has cards like this, and it also has the coins. The coins do carry over. Is there a dev stream today? No, it just happened. We're going over all the cards that they showed. Um, this is another card: five provisions, three strength, intimidate, uh, deploy damage an enemy unit by two. So it's same stats and damage as Wyvern. Instead of Thrive, it has intimidate. Every time you play a crime card, it gets plus one. Yeah, 
uh, Wyvern is very good. This card is, well, if you're playing crime cards, it's very good. Uh, next card, boost adjacent. Uh, this is five provisions, three strength. Deploy boost adjacent units by one. Tribute four, boost all allies on this row by one. So if you play this by itself and do nothing with it, uh, it's a five for five. Now, if you pay tribute four, which is something that you don't have to do, uh, this is different than fee, which means you cannot activate it multiple times. It is a one-time activation and you have to do it when you play the card. Um, so you can't play this and then like a couple turns later, play the tribute, right? You have to pay it immediately. So you spend four coins and then you boost the entire row by plus one, all allies. So uh, boosting, if you have a full row is plus eight and this becomes an 11 for five, but not really, it's not really an 11 for five because you're paying four and tribute or coins or crowns, jeez. Crowns are worth, I don't know if they're crowns or coins, I, whatever. Uh, they're worth about one provision each, right? Pickpocket is six for six. So it really becomes like uh, an 11 for nine. Is that good? Well, if you're playing a storm deck, yes, it is. Um, other factions can use fee? No. Uh, we discussed this card. This is a four for four. This is, yeah, it's it's a four mana seven, seven. Yeah, no. Uh, it's four for four, fee two, boost self by two. So if you play this card and you have two coins, you can spend your two coins and give it plus two. Um, or Horde. So Horde is another mechanic. Horde also works with your crowns or coins or whatever it's called uh, because there is a nine cap. Uh, ba basically, Horde is if you have seven crown coins, whatever, uh, you get this uh, better ability. So if you have seven coins um, and you use the fee of two, you get to boost this by three instead of plus two, which is good. Um, if you have nine, which was the uh, example they had, you can use the fee two and you can go boost by three and then you can do it again, boost three, and then you go back to boosting by two. So if you have nine coins, this card essentially becomes a six for four, right? Because like this, this you, you're breaking even, right? You're spending two and you're getting two, right? That's You're not getting extra value. But if you have the horde, and you have nine, you're getting uh, an additional one point for, you're getting three for two, which is really good. So this becomes a uh, six for four if you can get the horde nine. Uh, is this card good? Yeah, it's a good card. Um, and it's a way to spend coins. So one of the issues, once again, is spending. This is where deck building is going to be very difficult. They, they mentioned that this is not exactly a, an easy faction to play, but it's not even play. Building the deck is going to be harder than probably building any other faction deck um simply because uh I, I mean i guess i can discuss this now when you build like an sk deck you just play all the cards that get good value right this card is a eight for nine this card is a 10 for 11 like you just play everything or 10 for 10 uh not 10 for 11 right you just play all the cards that get good value right because everything just goes face and you're happy Whereas with this faction, it doesn't work really work like that, right? You have a new resource, which is crowns. Uh, you can increase this resource by spending other cards uh, like profit. I'll jump to profit here. Um, this is a, an example. This card is a zero tempo play other than if you have uh, Intimidate on board, right? If you have Intimidate uh, because this is a crime card, it gets plus one. But uh, you're 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 playing a card and not impacting the board at all when you play this nothing happens on the board on the unless you have engines on the board you're paying six provisions to do nothing that turn um but not really because you're gaining six profit right which is six coins which you can use later on so it's like six imaginary points for late or six non-interactable points um that sounds really scary you're getting like flashbacks of like no unit decks um, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue, right? Because you do have to spend the points and spending the points is like producing units with this or boosting units like this. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the idea when you go to build a deck, um, you have to balance out your cards, right? So you can't just dump a bunch of cards that give you coins because if you can't spend the coins, then you got a bunch of useless crown points and vice versa. If you have a ton of cards that spend points, 
you have no crowns, then you're screwed. So you, you have to have a combination of the both. Uh, and this also is going to matter for mulliganing. When you, when you mulligan, you got to make sure you have enough like resource cards. All right, we'll call these resource cards uh, and cards that can actually spend those resources. So yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult faction to both uh, play and build. Anyways, uh, we talked about this card. It's uh, assuming, yeah, it's a six or five, assuming you can utilize the crowns, which if you can't utilize the crowns, then you're kind of silly. Uh, how many coins do you start with? I'm going to assume zero. Uh, this is another card. This card is 10 provision, 6 strength. Prevent the unit on your left of this card from taking any damage. Um, so each faction is getting... Each non-syndicate faction is getting three dual cards. Right? So um, dual cards are cards that can be used in syndicate and another faction. So in this case, this would be a Skellige card. Each faction is going to get three. This is one of the three for Skellige. Um... Yeah, so you can play this in Skellige. The uh, combo that they mentioned is you play a card like this, you play Light Longship to the left of it, and then you play uh, Priest to the left of the, the Light Longship. Then essentially what you can do is your Priest pings your Light Longship, but it doesn't do any damage because this card uh, negates it. And when you ping with Light Longship, it also negates it. So you're negating two points every time that three uh, card combo goes off. Um yeah denying it's essentially plus two every turn that this card lives that's pretty good yeah if great swords if you weren't scared of old great swords well eh, now you should be just move it yeah uh if you dragoon this and move it back you kill the entire combo right it's not row locked but uh where a card is placed is very important so like dragoons are going to be very very good against this card uh so yes you'll be able to play this in the new faction syndicate as well as uh Skellige. Uh, we talked about this card a little earlier, but it's another way to expend crown points, which is very important. Um, and it's also going to work very well with a, uh, a swarmy type deck. Uh, this is, I don't know what it's called. Five provisions, three strength, uh, profit two. So you immediately get two coins. So right off the bat, it's a five for five. Um, fee one, give bleeding to an enemy unit for one turn. Uh, if it has bounty damage it by one instead so you can use this fee as many times as you want as many times as you have coin or crown points so if you wanted to if you had nine crowns you could give nine bleeding to a unit pog or if it has bounty you can damage it by one multiple times um bounty is a new mechanic basically if you give a unit bounty it gets like a it's gonna have some kind of uh What's it called? Uh, status effect, similar to like poison. Uh, bounty basically means if you kill that card, you get a bounty, which is crowns. So the bounty is based on the strength, uh, the base strength of the card. So an example would be if you play this and you give a, I don't know, a five strength unit bounty. Let's say uh, botchling. You give botchling bounty, which would actually be a terrible play because, you know, they just flip it and they lose the status. But in theory, you can do it in the same turn because it is fee. Anyway, so you 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 play this card beforehand. Okay, we're not gonna do botchling. Uh, random Morkvark, five strength. <laughs> Give Morkvark bounty. Uh, you could play this card assuming you have five coins or three plus a two. Uh, you can then ping it five times, kill it, uh, and then get the bounty of plus five uh, back to your side of the board. So yeah. Uh, if you're playing bounty cards like this card, this card's quite good. Um, what's the cap for coins? Nine. Yeah. So th this this card is <laughs> quite uh, quite good in a bounty deck. Like auto include good. Uh, yeah. On brawler, it's pretty insane. So if you if your opponent plays a seven strength brawler and it doesn't lock itself, bounty is crazy. All right, moving along. This is uh, eight, eight provisions, five strength, profit three, fee three, melee, place a bounty on an enemy unit. Uh, profit three, so you immediately gain three coins. Fee three, so once again, you can use this as many times as you want. So you could give, I don't know if bounties stack. I have no idea. So if you do like three of these on Morkvarg, is it like you kill that Morkvarg and you get 15? I mean, 15 crowns would be pretty useless, but whatever. Um, so I, I guess stacking them is not very useful unless it's on a small unit. But my guess is you can't stack. 
because uh, you can't you can't stack statuses on any other status, right? You can't double AR. If you double poison, it kills the unit. Uh, double shield doesn't exist. Double vitality just stacks. So I don't. I, I guess vitality stacks. Oh. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if bounty stacks. I uh, whatever. Uh, probably not, but maybe it does. I I don't actually know. Um. Anyway, so yeah. It, it, it's similar to like poison mechanic except not really because when you poison you need another poison card bounty you just need to kill the card um so you need to be running damage and the next card we're going to get into in a second is very very good with this um but yeah so i i think this I, I think this card was changed i'm pretty sure this card did not used to do this i'm actually very excited about this card this card is much better than what it used to be good <laughs> really good with bounty um, so yeah, bounty is another way to get crowns, uh, with removal. Moving along, this card is insane. This card is, yeah, probably the strongest card in the set. It's a really good card. Uh, this is like an un, yeah, this card's insane. So it's nine provisions, four strength, deploy damage an enemy unit by four. So it's essentially an unnerfed to frit. Um, except it has a second thing which is tribute six once again tribute you can use when you play the card you have to use it immediately or not use it immediately it's not like fee you can't go back to it um so yeah if you spend qu six crowns you get to destroy the target so if you spend six more which is roughly six provisions so the question is is a four strength eh, I, if you look at it like that it doesn't even seem that good would you pay 15 provisions for a four strength kill anything? Probably not. But, but, here's the difference. The, re the reason why it's better than that, right? Because if you evaluate it like that, it's pretty bad, right? But, what you have to realize is, would you play this card eight for nine? Yes, you would play this card. It was auto included in every deck. So you auto include this. And then if you run into spear tip or a big unit deck, or let's say your opponent's playing Tritum infantry and it goes to 15 or 20, oh, you just pay the extra six and blow the card out and you win the game, right? So the idea is it's a good card and every now and then it's broken, right? Because you're not actually, you don't have to pay the six to play the card. You just do that if you want to, right? What if your opponent plays a crazy engine that you have to kill, right? Uh, maybe your opponent plays some insane engine. I don't know. Let's say they play this card and you have no way of killing it. You have no locks in your hand and you don't have six damage. And if this card keeps going off, you auto lose the game. Well, then it might be worth paying uh, six crowns for it. So the flexibility is why this card is so good, right? Yes, this card is very good. Like auto include in every deck, good. Profit, we mentioned earlier, uh, it's a zero tempo card, unless, of course, you have uh, the engines on board, which get extra value whenever you play a crime, uh, but it gives you six profit, or six coins. So you could, in theory, play this into this and then kill anything if you really wanted to. Will you play a new faction? Of course. Can't you use the deploy and tribute? No, I don't think so. That would be, no, I, I, I highly doubt it. Um, this card, you got the, the cute little arts in the back uh four provisions three strength profit two bonded profit four instead so this is similar to the other bonded cards in the game um the monster one is three strength uh bleed two bonded bleed four uh so the difference is instead of like doing damage or boosting uh it's profit instead is this card good um i mean it's a five for four on play if you have the other one it's even better yeah if you need coins and you have the room, why not? Will Squayatel still be your favorite faction after the expansion? Well, I mean, I'm the Syndicate ambassador now, so... Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, this card's not bad. It'll see play. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't play this card is if you don't need the coins. No, I'm not actually... I was kidding, chat. <laughs> uh, this is the cute card. Five provisions. The crime... Uh, profit for a draw a card, then put a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. So it seems kind of bad. It's a four for five. But putting a card at the bottom of your deck means you're never drawing the card again. You can tutor the card out, but you're never drawing the card uh, off the top. Unless, of course, you thin to zero. But I doubt you're thinning to zero. 
So it's essentially four for five, then one. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, it's zero tempo. Well, yeah, so is this. This is also zero tempo. But you're getting value later on. Right? Uh, a similar effect would be like Vico Novice, kind of. Um, it's a similar effect in round three, unless you're doing some uh, combo thing with like, I don't know, uh, Vilgo Forts or like Kahir, or sorry, Calvite. Um, but yeah, thinning, well, I don't, I don't know if this card will see play. Depends on how badly they want to thin. If they want to thin, then yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's proactive play. Well, that's the other thing. Um, these are all proactive plays. Well, not all of them, but like this is a pro. Like if you lose coin flip, you just turn one this. Now it's your opponent's turn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, losing coin flip with this faction, uh, unless your entire hand is like zero tempo plays. Otherwise, like it's going to be fine. How is this not insane? Well, it, it is quite good, assuming you can spend the coins. Uh, moving along, we have uh, a new keyword, insanity. So insanity uh, is going to be coupled with fee. Uh, I'll, I'll go with the fee first. Uh, summon all copies of this unit from your deck to the row. Uh, it's six provisions, four strength. So if you spend two fee or two coins, uh, you pull the other one out. Or you can use insanity. So insanity means that instead of, uh, let's say you don't have... I don't actually know if... I'm not sure. Uh, so you... I don't know if you have two, if you can still use Insanity. So if you have zero coins on your leader, so if you turn one this and you don't have the fee, uh, you use Insanity and you take the damage equal to the fee. So in this case, it's fee two. So it would damage itself down to two and then pull the other copy out. So worst case scenario, if you have zero coin, uh, you play this and it pulls the other one out, but this takes two damage. So it's a six. Um, is that good? Well, Brigades are... Empower Brigades are six. For six, this is also six. For six, sure. Uh, and as the added bonus of being able to spend coins, sure. Uh, if you like thinning, it's a good card. Uh, yeah. And last card, it's another crime card. Profit three, lose all your crowns and damage an enemy by the same amount. Uh, it's four provisions. So yeah, this card doesn't break even, right? So if you play this card, yeah. Uh, it So removal is typically more expensive if you look at like a Frit and Regis and Thunder and, and most removals in the game. Removal is typically more expensive. Um, so with that in mind, I guess it's okay. But at the same time, you're blowing all your crowns. So like an example where this is good is, I don't know, uh, turn one, you play this card, you get profit two. And then tur uh, your opponent plays a botchling, like very next turn. Then you play this and you kill it, right? You get the profit three, you go to five, and then you kill the the uh, the botchling. Then it's quite good. But like, let's say you're at nine crowns, you probably never want to play. Okay, six crowns, you probably don't want to play this because you're blowing your entire load. Um, yeah, I mean, if if it let you choose the amount of crowns, if it was like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's going to see much play because it's, it's really gimmicky. Because the timing on this card can be very awkward, right? Let's say you're playing, like, a deck that wants to hoard. And you're trying to get to, like, the... Well, I guess you just never play it in a hoard deck. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's kind of expensive. I would like to see it at... Profit 4. Eh, profit 4 might be too good, though. I don't know. I, I, I'll I have to test it. I don't know how I feel about this car, card. Uh, Last move against monsters? I don't... Oh, yeah, there's one more card. Where's the... Where's the... Uh, I was going to say Shutterwalk. Uh, the other card. Yeah, 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 this card. Uh, this is another dual card. This will be a dual card with monsters. Uh, this card's eight provision, six strength. Deploy, destroy an allied unit and boost self by its base power. So why on earth would you ever want to play this? Um, I'll give you two examples. So the example they gave is, let's say you're using a card with insanity, right? So if you, I'm assuming they're going to print more than one card with insanity. Um, so 
I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, okay. If you use a card with insanity, you take damage. So in this case, this isn't a great case, but it is still an example. Uh, you take two damage. It's two strength. Uh, if you consume it, you get plus four. Or you'd get, you'd get plus two on the consume. So in that case, it's not great. But maybe there's more insanity cards down the, uh, the road. Um, you can also use it with Caranthier. So if you really wanted to, uh, you could Caranthier a spear tip. Right? The spear tip gets knocked down to one strength. And then you play Tatterwing. You eat the spear tip for plus 12. Wow. Uh, yeah. Granted, you now have an 18 on the board. Uh, which is pretty big, but, um, yeah. Uh, so that, that, that example is not great because you could just use BDM. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's good. So a, a better instance of this would be something like Caranthier into, uh, the five drop. Shit. Debt laugh. So if you play this on debt laugh, it's an extra consume proc for your debt laugh deck. Uh, but you get the extra four, which is pretty good. So with that laugh, this is or that laugh Caranthier, that exact combo. This card it's very very strong. Will this card see play? Um, it's basically okay. Look at it like this. It's a bigger harpy. Worst case scenario, well, I guess I guess you're you're paying an extra provision, but it is a, a, a it's a bigger harpy. So it's a better Harpy in a short round. Uh, but if your cards are ever damaged, it breaks even in terms of like comparing to Harpy or better, right? So like, let's say you play a, uh, a Harpy Egg and your opponent crack pings it by one, uh, then you're getting the same value as a Harpy. Shielard plus Spear. Sure. Uh, if your opponent shielded your spear tip down to one, you can play this and eat it and get full value. And then you can get Leo'd and clap your hands together. Yeah, so that's all the cards. 